Digital thread, digital twin, what are we talking about? Digital thread, just a queryable data set with all versions of the data, the inputs, the results, the decisions. What we are after is at any point in the life cycle, middle of design, middle of manufacturing, two years later when there's a car accident, right, or the patient dies, or right, I need to be able to trace back in time who made the decision, what inputs were they basing it on, right, and what decision did they make. It's a digital thread. It's got a thread, like a string. It's got to connect ideas together. There's quite a few of the 3D CAD vendors are talking about the important thing on a digital thread is that we provide a CAD file to the next step in the process, like model-based design. I don't know. Last time I looked, the CAD file doesn't contain enough information to build a product, right? We have to think about all of the data, and it turns out a lot of it is not file-based, right? Workflow decisions, electronics, software, labeling, packaging, right? All of this information influences your, the success of your product in the field, and success being product profitability, even safety, right? Interesting, there's been a lot of discussion over the years about knowledge bases. That's actually what we're building here. If we build up a digital thread where we understand who made decisions why, and can follow that through 10 years later to results in the field, you just built a knowledge base. Having a 3D CAD file that's sort of standing there in space, you don't know what its results were, is not a knowledge base. It represents a point in time, right? So you're gonna hear a lot about digital thread. I'm seeing uh, a lot of threads in the, in the, in the media, discussions on this. Um, gotta get rid of paper, gotta get rid of Excel, and we've gotta think about how do we get the whole system process running in one database. Digital model of a real world physical asset. That's not bad, right? I've got planes, I've got cars, I even got iPhones. You know, out in the field, do I as the manufacturer have a digital representation of that thing out in the field? For what purpose? Well, stuff changes, you know that. I need to be able to simulate whether the change I'm considering, how's that gonna impact the real physical product? I need a digital twin for that, All right? In our FDA and FAA controlled industries, right? digital twin and I have the physical thing in my hand, that's how I'm gonna validate, we, we've, or verify, sorry, that we've actually met the requirements, right? We're gonna hear about IoT tomorrow. Think about when all of your products are phoning home and streaming megabytes of data back. How many of us have all the products out in the field identical? Doesn't happen. Between ECO changes and maintenance and everything else, IOT data streaming back without understanding the context, what's the configuration of each of those cars, airplanes, whatever that are phoning home, is just a bunch of bits, right? We want to think about the configuration of each device. So here's a quiz. Um, found, I found a CAD model and an airplane. I think it's a 727, right? So does that CAD model, that 3D CAD model, could be even photorealistic, is that a digital twin of the aircraft on the right? Your 3D CAD vendor says it is. I would propose to us here that the 3D CAD file by itself, it's a picture. It does not contain enough information on electronics, on software versions, right? On the maintenance history to actually make meaningful decisions about how I'm gonna maintain that aircraft, right? This is something we have to be careful of when we talk about the digital twin, right? If, if we move into IoT, we move into connected vehicle, right? We are literally talking about we need an electronic representation, the twin, of everyone that's out in the field. Otherwise, all that IoT data is just going to be lots of bits. We don't have intelligence to, to come out of that. And I, and I promise you, I don't know how many 727s are out in the field, but it's got to be thousands. Nobody is sitting down and updating the CATIA model for each, of the, each one of those as parts are swapped, as maintenance is done, right? 
And this is what we need to know. When you have IOD, IoT performance data coming back, I need to know that the, the abnormal data pattern I'm seeing is related to a maintenance event or a particular supplier's replacement parts. If I don't have that level of detail, it's a bunch of bits. 